seven years after 9-11, we have not won. I, I hope this is a reasonably safe general description. You know, people of the President of the United States said we were at war. The Congress basically uh, said do whatever it takes. They later on began to think they didn't mean it. Uh, but, but even President Obama has said pretty clearly he's shifted the site of the war from Iraq to Afghanistan, but he hasn't said we could get out of the war. Now, I find it very disturbing that nobody is demanding a fundamental reexamination of the war strategy and where we are. Now, I'm not talking about the argument between Bush and Obama. I'm not talking about Iraq versus Afghanistan. I'm suggesting something much more fundamental. We won the Civil War in four years. We won the Second World War in three years and eight months. It's one of the most amazing achievements in history. From, from Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941, to victory over Japan in August of 1945, it's 44 months. We mobilized the nation, built a two-ocean navy, built the B-24, B-17, B-29, mobilized 15 and a half million people. We launched American power across North Africa, Sicily, Italy, France, Belgium, the Netherlands, liberated Germany. At the same time, simultaneously, we went across the Pacific. And the Japanese surrendered in August of 1945. Three years and eight months. It recently took us 23 years to add a fifth runway to the Atlanta airport. I mean, we have no, and, and frankly, the big troubling thing about Secretary Gates' budget decisions are that given the cycle time of the current over-regulated, over-red tape, over-bureaucratic defense structure. We are making decisions today that will unilaterally disarm us around 2025 or 2030. Because our, unless you imagine very dramatic reform of the system, it is incapable of launching new systems of weapons and new systems of capability on a large scale in a short period of time. It's a huge problem. But I'm also suggesting something much more profound. We need a pretty large national debate about the nature of the war we're in and what we're doing about it. Because we've been sending our young men and women to risk their lives, and we've been sending a lot of money spread across the entire planet. I'm, I'm, I support it. I am for it. But I find it very troubling that we're drifting into a belief that this is just a condition we live in rather than a war to be won. And I think that's very dangerous because it gives your opponents a lot of time to organize against you, a lot of time to think through what you do well, and a lot of time to develop countervailing strategies. And so I would simply posit everything I'm about to say about where we are from the standpoint that we have now been in a war, depending on when you want to start. You can start in the 80s in Lebanon. You start, uh, as Mark Bowden does in his book, Bowden wrote Black Hawk Down. He recently wrote a book called Guest of the Ayatollah. He argues that 1979 seizing of the American embassy was the first shot in Iran's war against America. So in the Bowden model, we've been at war with Iran for 30 years. It's just we, they knew it and we didn't. Uh, you can go back and say, well, that's, not, that's too far back. That doesn't count. We don't want to count Lebanon in the 80s, which was almost certainly an Iranian-funded attack. So let's just start in the 90s. World Trade Center bombing in New York. Kobar Towers bombing in Saudi Arabia. Two American embassies bombed in East Africa. An American ship bombed in Yemen, the coal. So would the 90s count? Are those acts of war, or are they just random moments of violence on a planet where sometimes people are unhappy? Well, they all have the same thread. And so you could argue at one level, let's just start with the World Trade Center bombing, which was on our soil, partly organized by a uh, sheikh who was in Attica prison, which is why this whole argument about where you incarcerate terrorists is important. And then you have to say to yourself, all right, so that means we've now been at war for 16 years? Was well, anybody really comfortable with our current strategy and our current understanding of victory? I'm not. I, th I think we grossly underestimate how hard this is. And this is why Secretary Gates has a huge problem. On the one hand, he has a worldwide set of commitments he cannot get out of that involve people who want to kill us tomorrow morning. On the other hand, he has emerging complex competitors of increasing capability. And he has decided, in order to meet a totally artificial budget number, that we will not prepare for the future in order to try to focus our resources in the present. 
which may be a legitimate strategy if you believe you're not going to live more than five years and you have no children and grandchildren and you don't care about the future of the country.